Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're wrapping up a yard makeover with this family that will truly make the great outdoors great. So isn't this gonna be great? Unbelievable. It's, it's gonna look really nice. <laughs> We're right in the middle of a yard makeover we started last week for Billy Cavula and Brenda Martins. We are very much looking forward to being able to spend a lot of time outside. They recently bought this home and they love its character, its location, and the neighborhood, but the yard, eh, not so much. The previous owner had used the front yard as a parking lot that destroyed whatever lawn might have been there and left it looking more like a beach than a lawn. I know you're going to miss your beach, but <laughs> I think I'm going to look very forward to the boys not dragging all this dirt into the house every time they come home or their friends come in. And yes, I'm looking yes. so forward to having a little more shape also to the yard. Oh, yeah. It's too beautiful of a neighborhood to have this kind of front yard. Mm -hmm. so. Since Billy and Brenda also needed to supplement the existing narrow drive with some extra parking, we decided to create a paver parking pad that would be both attractive and useful. Our buddy Andy Morton from Pavestone showed up to offer his expertise, so we've made some great progress. In just two days, we were able to dig up the beach out front, lay a solid foundation, and put hundreds of individual pavers in place to take the paver parking pad from an idea to a very real attractive addition to Billy and Brenda's home. I love the look of a paver. I think it's very welcoming. Um, I think the pavers create a warmth. In the backyard, Billy and Brenda had a good-sized patio, but it was pretty bland. We're not used to being able to spend um, the majority of the year being outside and enjoying the weather. Um, we've moved from a much colder climate where you had about four months to um, eat outside and grill outside unless you wanted to do it in knee deep snow. So to add some color and character, we started with the patio itself. Alan and Brenda cleaned it thoroughly and added a terracotta translucent stain followed by a high gloss sealer that really brought the tired old concrete to life. Oh, I couldn't imagine that it would look that different, and it, and it really did. I think Billy and Brenda are hooked. It's as exciting as, as can be. So to start day three, Andy and Billy are applying a coat of sealer to the pavers. So Andy, tell me about the product. Is it full strength or do I cut it? Yeah, full strength. You just dump it right in the sprayer, and then you just start spraying on back and forth, nice even coats, try to get a good uh, even coverage. Tell you what, we've got another beautiful day that we're working with here. Perfect conditions to apply the waterproofer to the face of the pavers that we completed yesterday. Now, this will really help to repel any of the oil stains, which is part of having a driveway, and just keep it looking better for a lot, lot longer. And we'll check around back, see how Alan and Brenda's doing on the start of the lattice work. All right, you got the first piece of lattice ready. Huh? Here we go. It's ready to roll on there. Right, I see your faucet slot here and so forth. Yeah. Well, what do you think? You see how, even though the wall doesn't look bad, you see how it'll, this will add just a little bit of uh, dimension, I guess. Right, and I think it'll make it warm. Yeah. And I think with that planting area, yeah. you think I could put some ivy in there to have it grow up well, the wood? You know, you actually could. Uh, of course, a lot of people use this for, you know, different trellises okay. and that type of thing. So uh, I think putting it in place, uh, no problem at all. You just have to be patient, allow it to, <laughs> to grow up a little bit. Hey, how are you planning on attaching it? Well, it's almost the exact height here, so once I tuck it in here, I'm going to come with screws coming up into the board here that'll hold it in place. That's great. Here, let me give you guys a hand here. This lattice from Yellowwood is made from pressure-treated pine to stand up to the weather, and termites won't eat it, so it'll last a long, long time. Plus, it has the character and warmth of real wood that will be needed to bring this patio to life. All right, what do you think? I think it looks great. It's exactly what we thought, adding uh -huh, a little warmth just to the a little area. Bit of, yeah. Little dimension there. We'll get some ivies growing up there to look oh, really nice. nice. Like <laughs> maybe some jasmine even. Back in the front yard, Billy and Andy are making great progress on sealing the drive. This high gloss sealer will not only protect the surface, it leaves it with a bit of a wet look that shows off the texture and character of each individual paver. While we continue trying to keep the dirt out of Brenda's house, Joe has a solution for cleaning up a different kind of mess. My friend Blackie here is a sweetie pie but she tends to leave black fur all over the rug. In this case, I even vacuum the rug, but you still can't get up all the fur because it gets stuck down in the fibers. So I found one way to get up the fibers is with 
a squeegee. This is just a common window squeegee they attach to an old mop handle. It has a sponge on one side, but on the other side has a really firm, rigid rubber squeegee. And I've found is if you rake that across the carpet, excuse me there, Blackie, you can see after just a few strokes, look at that, little pieces of Blackie coming up here. There you go. What you can do is, and it goes pretty quickly. You can get squeegees wider than this. This was only eight inches wide. You can get a wider one if you have a larger room. And you can see it just pulls the fur right out of the deep fibers of the carpet. And once they're pulled up, once you get them all raked up like that, you can just lift them up and toss them out, or maybe then come back with a vacuum and get the rest. Our yard makeover for Billy and Brenda is really starting to take shape. Now Alan and Brenda are going to take it a bit further. All right, we have the space. Now we're going to create the room Ooh, that's with a furniture. Okay, Sound what do you good? have in mind? Okay, I mentioned uh, maybe some tables and chairs, right? Right. All right, I've got some plants here from Yellowwood. This is from uh, buildyellow.com. It's an Adirondack table. Do you like the table? I do. I I'm do. glad you do because I've actually already <laughs> built four Adirondack chairs. Okay. <laughs> Everyone loves Adirondack chairs. So what we'll do, we'll uh, follow some plants. I mean, it's really easy. It's got a full cut list, everything okay. that we need, uh, exploded view. Uh, we'll make a few uh, cuts of lumber. Okay. and then we'll start putting this together. Okay. Right. The great thing about like these Yellowwood plans is that they're very helpful for do-it-yourselfers of all skill levels. Perfect! You don't have to be a hardcore woodworker to understand them. The instructions are clear. Three quarter by three by 24 inches. By 24. They require fairly basic tools and soon they'll even include step-by-step -step videos hosted by a handsome and talented TV host you may be familiar with. All right. There we go. Got a problem here, Ben. <laughs> well, here, let me pull it back up. <laughs> okay, let's do that one more time. Andy and I are getting started on another addition for the patio, a fire pit. All right, Andy, what do you think? Well, it looks like we've, uh, right here in the center of the patio, we've already got a grid line laid out here with the, uh, the marks in the concrete. So we'll start right here in the front, right off the front side. Uh, the minis right there, the little guys. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see there on the directions. Go ahead and grab me another one if you would. Okay. You can kind of see that's, that's the center. So we'll center that right up on the line here. Then we're going to do a large. Okay. And then we'll do the medium, the square one there. It goes right on the corner. You can put that right in there. Okay. So I heard you say yesterday, 30 minutes or less. Yeah. Well, Easily. I can see, this is it though, huh? Yeah, all there is to it, real simple uh, process. Is This is the Rumble Stone system. It's a three-piece system here. And uh, the little guys are the minis. We got the larges, and then the big square ones are called the mediums. <laughs> One more large there, and we'll have the first course finished out. And then you stack right on top or overlap? We go right on top, and, and then the seams will overlap each other, basically, as well. when we stand up the next course vertically. This is actually so easy, Alan could even Oops. do it. So easy, so easy even a caveman can do it. Yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, Large. what have you done to my patio? Uh-oh, here, here comes the boss now. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. Yeah. Check it out. Unbelievable. And then you're gonna have another large following that up. So that's, okay. How long did this take, guys? Well, we're into about 20 minutes right now is all. That's all? I mean, yes. Yeah, and it lined up on the on the crosshairs here. It looks uh -huh. very nicely. You got the hands of a pianist, not of a laborer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let you get the capstone you get here. The last one. There you are. Man, that is just perfect. Wow. Just, there's the metal insert now. Exactly. We got a little assembly to do. Bolt that together, and then we'll be ready to build a fire. That looks like Brendan Allen are making some progress over there. Uh, you nervous about Brenda using that miter saw over there? Oh, we'll be counting our fingers in about an hour. She looks pretty fearless over there. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the fingers. How about that? <laughs> Unbelievable. So 22 minutes. Right on the nose. <laughs> Man, that is that is great. I mean, you can't hardly mess up on that. That yep. is fantastic. Yep. I like that a lot. Andy's work here is done, but before he leaves, he stops to check on the driveway one last time. 
Andy, I'll tell you, it always amazes me just putting that sealer on and how much color and character really comes out in the stones. That's for sure, yeah. It just really kind of caps it off. Plus, it's going to protect and help those stones last a little longer, too. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, man, thanks so much for all the help and everything. You and Dave right. Stone helping us with all of this and the, and the fire pit out back. I can't wait to drop back by with Billy and Brenda and sit around the fire a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a, you got a great job now. How about hanging around with some sod work? We got three pallets of sod coming. What do you think? You know, I, I got a catch point. I'm oh, gonna, gonna have to head out. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll let you off the hook. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> While Andy's catching that plane and we're getting ready for sod, why don't you catch this best new product with Jody? Well, as you can see, there are a lot of options when it comes to pressure washers, but take a look at this one right here. This is by Ryobi, and I like a lot of things about this, actually. Look at the power that you get with this particular one. So if you've got a lot of cleaning to do, 3100 PSI will tackle those projects. It also has a Honda engine, but I think what I like best is this right here. Look on the end of the wand here. You know, usually on a typical pressure washer, you have to stop the pressure washer and change out the nozzles here, the different options for the different patterns. With this one, all you gotta do is turn it to get the degree of the pattern that you want. So it's all right there at your fingertips. Another uh, thing that this offers is that when you release the handle, it automatically powers down to 90 PSI. And what that does, is it actually does a couple of things. It saves energy, so it makes it more energy efficient, but it also allows you to turn that nozzle to get a different spray pattern without having all of that force. And then, of course, it's ready to go when you're ready to pull that trigger again. The pieces of our yard makeover for Billy and Brenda are all coming into place. The paver parking pad is done, the patio stain, lattice, and fire pit are done in the back, and now it's time to get these folks a lawn. And that involves a lot of pieces. Pieces of sod, that is. You know, I don't know what it is about laying sod that is so satisfying. I mean, look, we've just got this dusty old yard right now, but within about an hour, we're all gonna gang up on it. We'll lay the sod, and Brenda and Billy will have a brand new yard. The sod we're using here is called St. Augustine. It's a warm season grass. It's very common in most areas of the south with sandy soil. <laughs> However, the harsh winter this year has kept this stuff dormant a little longer than usual, so it's more brown than green right now. But with a few warm days and regular watering, it'll soon oh, turn emerald green. Don't you love this stuff? I love the instant gratification of it. Drop and flop. That's Drop what you and need flop. To do. Drop and flop. All right. Okay. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Boom. Okay, Get that more. moving. Need some more. I imagine just seeing something like this, Danny, reminds you of in the mornings when you had to put your hair on. I ain't gonna worry about that. All right, Billy, we got a pattern going here just so we want to overlap, don't want to line them up. So okay. we'll just start just anywhere you want to go, just start from one end and uh, just throw it on the ground and I'll use a rake to kind of position it. Okay, so tell me about care of this stuff. You're doing just right. Well, um, water, water, water. I mean, one thing about it, you got some great soil here. It's just, you know, a little sandy, so you're gonna have plenty of good drainage and all. And, and I'd let it grow for a couple weeks or more before okay. you cut it. Let it get a little tall and then just cut that top third off of it. And this is St. Augustine, so it's good in these shady areas like this. Okay. Speaking of shady areas, shady character right over here. <laughs> no comment. He's been good to me all week. <laughs> Danny Lifford, laying sod. Billy? Yes, sir. Danny Lifford, laying sod. Yeah, just throw and go. <laughs> throw and go. Throw and go. <laughs> throw and go. Well, look how, look, look what I've done here. <sighs> Created an instant yard. Give my, give my prop back. Well, look here, Billy. We got a little extra help here. How about that? We'll take it. Hey, look me. here. We've got extra gloves. Oh, How about that? Convenient. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> so isn't this going to be great? Unbelievable. It's it's going to look really nice. <laughs> I'm figuring you will fill in those blanks right no, there. No, Alan will. Okay. Alan got a few holes over here. All right. He's the true artiste. I'm a throw and go kind of guy, Danny told me. <laughs> Eventually, we have the whole front yard covered with sod. No more beach, just our great new driveway and a lawn. So, we have grass now. We do. And we thought you would need a brand new lawnmower. Oh. Our friends at Lawn Boy have just developed this whole new line of lawnmowers, and it really is interesting. First of all, 
you see this. This model has an electric start, so there's no need to yank on a pull cord to get it going. The idea is to make the user's job easier. With features like a two-point height of cut adjustment, a rear-wheel drive self-propelled system, and a larger bag that holds more so you empty it less often. When our friends at Lomboy um, heard that we were putting some sod out, they wanted to make sure you guys had one of these. Oh, that, that is, is so sweet. great. We, uh, <laughs> we actually left ours back up north because we didn't think we would need a lawnmower. Is that so, right? Well, yes, here you this go is now. So. An unbelievable <laughs> surprise. Thank you so much. Excellent. So our work in the front is done, but the new paver parking pad really makes the old asphalt drive look even worse. So Billy has hired a paving contractor to resurface it. That's not exactly a do-it-yourself project anyway, but it sure is a great improvement. Back on the patio, however, there are a few more details for us to wrap up. All right, Billy, I got some sand for us to pour down in here so that yes, uh, we sir. can be able to build a fire. Alan, yep. if you want to take Brenda, your worthy helper, yes. and uh, start positioning that furniture up there, I think well, we're ready since to we build it. I think we should. This sand will protect the patio from the heat of the fire. So if Billy and Brenda decide to reposition the fire pit later, all that'll be necessary is a little sweeping. You don't have any cats, do you? No. <laughs> Cat might find this little sandbox interesting. <laughs> Let's move it that way. Okay. Bit. There we go. How about that? And then turn it oh, the same angle. Oh, I know where you're going. Now. That, I know what you're going. Okay. Okay. No, I like to put my feet up. So how are they going to reach from there? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> You realize, you know, you got a cooking surface on the fire pit. You don't need that anymore. I know it. I know it. This, this has become obsolete. <laughs> we need um, some color. Okay. You know, some plants and firewood. Okay. I know you like your symmetrical. We're just a bunch of guys, so you better start talking <laughs> where to put these things. How you doing with the firewood there? It's kind of like a, a hot dog roast on the beach with I all know. the sand here. I like it. Or some s'mores. Yeah. Ooh, s'mores. I Sounds know. Good. So okay, weird. dessert's on it. <laughs> Six o'clock. Yeah. Beverly asked, what do you think would be the most economical way to water my flower beds? When you're looking to save money on watering your flower beds, the thing you need to do is make sure you get that water right where it's needed, right around the roots, and reduce the amount of evaporation. You can do that by using a soaker hose. Soaker hose is a very inexpensive type of hose that basically allows water just to seep right out on all parts of the hose. That way you can weave it in and around the plants, even bury it under the mulch if you want, so that that water can go straight to the roots, and again, reducing the amount of evaporation. Another way of doing it is through drip irrigation that you can hook to a regular hose or you can integrate it into your existing irrigation system. They even have a lot of do-it-yourself kits that make it very easy to handle all of that work yourself. Either way, the plants will love it. And if you really want to save some more, make sure you have plenty of mulch to retain that moisture. Before we started this project, Billy and Brenda's front yard was a dust bowl, or the beach as they like to call it. No grass and no real curb appeal aside from the house itself. It needed more parking possibilities and a more welcoming atmosphere. We created both with the addition of this beautiful paver parking pad. The pad adds plenty of warmth and character to the landscape and it transitions nicely into an inviting walkway to the front door. Adding a lawn and resurfacing the existing drive just completed the picture, but the icing on the cake is this garden bench made with plans from buildyellow.com. Now Brenda has the relaxing spot she wanted to enjoy her neighborhood. The back patio was in a lot better shape, but still pretty bland. A coat of stain on it started bringing the area to life and the natural wood lattice began to give it some personality. Finally, the fire pit and Adirondack chairs made it feel like the most comfortable room in the house and possibly the most popular one. Oh, I see you have the fire started already. Oh, yeah. You did. Found just enough twigs and branches to get you started first time. For the first fire, but after that, it's all Billy. <laughs> okay. Well, here's some refreshments. Oh, thank you. Everyone has worked hey, so great. hard. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Now, you know, after the coals die down here, you can uh, be perfect for cooking those steaks or hot dogs or whatever you want out here. Well, I need some s'mores for yeah, Alan. Some s'mores for Alan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's show and seeing how you can do some simple things around the outside of your house that can make a big, big improvement. We certainly had a lot of fun putting everything together for the Martins here, and I hope that uh, we've been able to give you a little inspiration and maybe a few ideas that you can use around your own house. I'm Danny Lipford. Thanks for being with us here on Today's Homeowner. We'll see you next week. Right. I think I could just camp here. I'm telling you, Al and I have known each other for a long oh, time. Yeah? Still don't like him, but it's been <laughs> only for a long time.
Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.